What's going on, everybody? Steve here with Gate City Sports Channel. Sports Channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. All right, guys, we're going to do a um, a prospect kind of draft profile video here, guys. And uh, today I want to take a look at uh, Jarrett Patterson from Buffalo, University of Buffalo. Small school guy, big name throughout the college circle, guys. We mo Most of us that really follow college football, we know this name fairly well, even though I think I'm butchering his first name, but still. Um, when I, you know, when you really dig down and you look at who he is, you can look at the advanced analytics guys and see quite clearly he runs a lot of zone stuff outside, inside zone. But more particularly, when I say zone, he runs a lot of RPO and he runs a lot of zone read coming out of Buffalo. So any kind of offense that's going to be primarily based upon those things, I could see, you know, Jarrett Patterson having some, some utilization, some use here that, that would make a ton of sense, right? Some of the things I noticed about him, guys, is is that man, it's really hard to, to to like to weigh in on this guy in terms of his ability to to gain yardage, short yardage. When I say this, so there are definitely plays when I'm looking at thirty three, thirty and four. He's got pretty good vision. I mean, he's hard to find coming out of the backfield, guys. Like he's so short that he just kind of pops up on you as a linebacker, and I think he can really get you in, in those situations. But when you get a little more congested. I saw some instances on 31 and 4th and 1 where he kind of got stood up and shut down. But the dude scored 19 touchdowns on the season. You know, you put up 19 touchdowns, it means you're pretty good in the goal line. And there were quite a few examples of this guy just getting in off of off the zone read from, from the goal line situation. Um, I don't think I would call this a contact balance back, guys. He's just not big enough at 5'9", 195 pounds. That's that's not a contact balance back in my opinion. Although he's got good size for for his height, he's not he's not like a a thinned out small guy that can't take contact either. You can see some of this stuff kind of play out, guys. If you look at his 140 attempts on the season, 1,074 yards, 7.7 .7 yards per average, 19 touchdowns, yards after the contact, 664 out of 1,074. Guys, this is a high rate, man. We're talking over 60 percent of his yardage coming after contact uh, per average rush attempt. He gains about 4.7 yards after contact, which is pretty high, guys. Um, missed kind of the, the missed tackle element to him. He had like 47 on the season. And he's got a really high elusive rating. Like their elusiveness rating gave him a 159.2, which is really high. And what I'll say is, is that he's not like a, you know, like a Clyde Hilaire, you know, Edwards. He's not, or Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I think I said that backwards, guys. Um, he's not like that. He's not like a shake, shake you kind of like a DeAndre Swift. Like he's not that type of, of back. But he's got like this weird like kind of phone booth elusiveness to him, right? Like he doesn't make big drastic movements with his bodies, but he makes just enough of a movement that when you get him in these tight congested spaces, he actually becomes pretty pretty difficult to tackle, guys. Like he becomes a very, very difficult running back to bring down. And like he can definitely make guys miss. Um, I thought he also did a pretty good job of like bouncing, bouncing plays. So like he starts off inside, he had pretty good vision to see when a hole is closed off and you're not, you're just not, there's nowhere to go there. Did a pretty good job. I think of basically getting his arm in air, stiff arming a guy or two and, and being able to get to that edge, win to the edge, you know, winning to the edge and then getting outside. Um, this is definitely not like, I didn't see anything that would indicate this is a burner. Uh, I could be wrong. I don't know his game that well, guys, if I'm going to be quite honest. I only know from watching him play a couple of lower-level guys that I didn't see a great separation in the open field. But I don't know, man. Perhaps I just didn't watch enough of his film to really see that. But I didn't see a guy that, like, you know, you turn on the film and you think to yourself, like, man, this guy's just, he's really pulling away from guys. Like, this is, this guy's really fast, right? I, I, I didn't see that from him. I didn't see that burner kind of capabilities here like Achilles and those guys who have like tremendous speed. I didn't I didn't see that level of athleticism from Jarrett Patterson. Um I will say that some of the limitations I noticed on film guys, he, he just was not used as a receiver. I thought there were times where he was he honestly was open. They just didn't give him the ball. I can't really weigh in to say if he has good hands or not because the dude didn't catch like from what I could tell from PFF he didn't catch a single ball in the season. Like, that's tough to really say. So, I, I mean, he certainly hasn't played that role this past year at Buffalo. So, but you know, to be fair, Miles Sanders really wasn't a receiving back at Penn State either and got to the NFL and, and turned out to be one. So, 
every now and then these type of guys will surprise you. Every now and then these guys will, will turn into to something more of a, of a three down back. And I think that's where the concern is I would have with Jarrett Patterson. If I'm honestly, it, it just take away the Eagles guys. Let's just talk about the NFL in general. If you're an, a fan of a different team, you're watching this video guys. I, I would have to wonder, can you really consider this guy to be a three down back? And that's where I have my doubts. I don't, I don't think he's a three down back right now, guys, to be quite honest. Like his pass blocking was not good. Like, he just, he really looked unaware, and you can even see on his pass blocking gradings, I think he was graded out like a 60.6. Um, he played a lot, though, out of two back sets. So I think a team that can be multiple in its run looks and can run some zone option, you know, like Baltimore and Philly and some of these other teams that can do that kind of stuff, um, he, he could be quite interesting to, to see in that backfield because he did have a a decent run blocking grade, 66.1. That's not lighting the world on fire, guys, but certainly better than his pass blocking grade. And I thought he was definitely a willing blocker. Like, he wasn't scared to go out there and block for his teammates. Um, I'm going to say past that, guys, like, you know, you really dig down on this. He doesn't have a lot of film to really judge his pass, you know, catching abilities. And then in the same regard, he's not the greatest run blocker or pass blocker, I'm sorry, let me speak clearly here. He's not the greatest pass, you know, pass pro, pass protection uh, blocker. So, I mean, that makes you wonder, like, is this a dude that's more of a first down, second down back, you know, change of pace kind of guy? He's probably not going to be your third down back right now. I mean, look, anything is possible in the league. These guys go through protocol. These guys go through stuff, you know, to, to advance their games, right? You get him with the right coaching staff. You give him, a, you know, a year or so to kind of develop. And, and maybe this is a completely different guy than we're talking about today. But I do have my doubts if, if I would call this guy a three down back right now. But like I said, guys, I mean, kind of my my concluding thoughts on this young man is, is that he's not a thumper. Um, I, I didn't see him like when I watched this game film, I didn't see him as a, a guy I would classify as like a north south runner per se. Like, well, that's not the right way of saying it. I didn't see him as a contact balance back. I did think that he was a north and south runner. I mean, I do think he genuinely does get north and south. But I didn't see a lot of contact balance per se. Like not not when I say contact balance, I mean like hits a guy, falls over three or four yards. Like I think he's pretty good at being in the phone booth, putting him in a tight space and making guys miss him. Um, I, I do think he's pretty good there. To be honest with you, it's probably a happy balance in between those two of where like I'm not saying that he can't have the ability to to hit a guy and get a yard or two, but it's probably somewhere in the middle, right? Like he's a little better at being elusive in tight spaces than he is at being a contact balance back. If that makes sense, I just think. Think about it on a sliding scale, right? He's a little bit more towards the uh, tight space elusiveness than he is for, like, just kind of run you over Jordan Howard style. Um, Like I said, guys, past that, guys, I don't think that he's a three-down back. I just don't. I don't think he can pass protect. I don't think he can catch pretty well right now. I think those are, are elements of his game that he's going to have to prove at the NFL level. So I, I can't see him as a third-down back. I think he's more of a maybe a you know potential change of pace back more than anything. Um, two back set kind of guy and to be quite honest with you guys another thing I can kind of bring up here is is that he played at Buffalo so the level of competition is going to be a concern although I will say in the games I watched him play I thought he was pretty good guys I'm not gonna lie to you I mean I thought he performed well in those games but I mean to be fair those are not SEC defensive lines those are not even ACC defensive lines like you know I would like to have seen a, a better you know, level of competition from him. And if you guys are familiar with, with Jarrett Patterson and you have a game that you could suggest you want me to break down to where maybe he played a better level of competition than like the Miami of, of Ohio game I watched, like you could just tell me it. I'll try to, I'll try to find it and I'll take a look at it for you and let you guys know if it changes my mind uh, about this prospect. But I see him as a change of pace back in the NFL in terms of like where I think his value is. It's hard to say, man. Like, this is the thing I hate about trying to evaluate and say where a guy's value is. All it takes is one team to overdraft somebody. So saying someone's value, like, I mean, we're just basically saying that if you don't say, if you take this guy before this this round, you're reaching. That's, that's really what you're saying. To me, I think that he's a day three pick. I don't see this guy being drafted before the fourth round. But crazier things have happened. I think he's really a deep day three guy. I think this is more of a fifth round or later guy, but even potentially an undrafted rookie free agent kind of kind of guy. But he's got a lot of hype, man. He's pretty good. 
in you know get finding the end zone, 19 touchdowns on the yard on the year. Um, he's pretty well known across NFL or college, not NFL, but through college circles. Like this guy was definitely a big name in, in college football the past couple of years. Like it's, it's hard to tell man. All it takes is for a few scouts and, and one GM to fall in love with them guys. But like I said, I, I think he's more of a day three pick. If he gets drafted, I'm going to say fifth round or later. And I think there is a, a potential possibility that this guy becomes an undrafted rookie free agent personally, but what do I know? <laughs> all right, guys. That's all I got for y'all today. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Don't forget, if you want to support the channel, link's in the description to buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, don't forget to like and comment, guys. That helps spike the algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, please consider hitting that subscription button, guys. And uh, I'll tell you what, guys. I'll see y'all on the next video.